And today we will be discussing the Stilbay Complex and Howison's Port, which, if you do not know what they are, you will soon. Now these are probably the two most prominent periods pioneering the first signs of creativity within the archaeological record. So, we begin. During this period we see the first use of heating lithics, the invention of the bow and arrow, more refined stone tool points like arrowheads, and the representation of symbolic imagery in various artefacts. So we begin with the elder of the two which would be the Silbay complex. And the most famous site that holds archaeological evidence for this techno tradition is in Blombos Cave in southwestern South Africa, which is a place that holds most of the archaeological evidence for these two periods. It was previously thought that the duration of the Stilbay complex was about a thousand years and occurred about 77,000 years ago. There was about a 7,000 year temporal interlude between the two techno traditions. However, this cannot be so clear cut, this is purely deduced through the archaeology found. Now interestingly, the low period between the two where we see no archaeology is around the time that Mount Toba erupted, which happened about 74,000 years ago and meant that there was a brief period of a few thousand years of global cooling, which must have significantly reduced the number of Homo sapiens on the earth at that point. However, what has been found of the Steel Bay period, largely in Blombos Cave, has been various stone points, which have been found at both Blombos Cave, Deep Kloof Rock Shelter and other various rock shelters. There is one of the most famous, what some people may regard as the oldest piece of art that was found in Blombos Cave, which is a piece of oak stone with various diagonal engravings in it along with some ostrich egg sherds with a similar kind of repeated motif, which is evidence of somebody clearly deciding to actually make this pattern for whatever reason. It may be symbolic, it may just be that they were bored, who knows. However, although I say the Still Bay complex is the oldest recognisable piece of archaeology in which we see first evidence of creativity. There have been older layers in Blombos Cave that have been dated to around 100,000 years old and they actually found evidence of early paint making. There was an abalone shell with evidence of ochre pigment inside and a seal bone that was potentially used to either mix it or apply it to people or something else, who knows. In addition to this, in Deep Kloof Rock Shelter, there have been ostrich egg sherds that date to between 109 to 52,000 years old, which is a very wide range of time. However, this implies sustained use over a long period at that site, which may in fact mean that the culture there did not change for several tens of thousands of years, which is very interesting and also suggests that we had those three psychological foundations that enabled us to be creative, most likely way before 100,000 years ago. Now there are actually sites such as Sibudu Cave in which there are pre-100,000 year old evidence of ochre pigments being used. So it's most likely that the cognitive intelligence of people pre 100,000 years ago was at least beginning, if not almost at the level that we are today. Now, because there were various colours of ochre, it suggests pre-depositional heating was being practised. And because of a lot of stuff going on in the archaeological record, post 100,000 years ago, this practice of using ochre and fire to heat the ochre to make various colours grew rapidly post the 100,000 year mark. So, that was a bit chaotic. But now we're moving on to Howison's Port, which is the next most famous period of known archaeological creativity. Now this was also happening in South Africa, so this suggests some kind of passing on, most likely, of culture in that region. Now during this time, we see a lot more use of ochre, um, tools that were used for more sophisticated hunting methods, more symbolic imagery engraved in ostrich egg sherds and ochre stone, and rudimentary adhesives for hafting, 
showing an expansion in the use of potentially spearing or using a bow and arrow and therefore showing a general richer variation in tools used. Now this was a slightly more long-lived tradition, most likely between 65.8 to 59.5 thousand years ago and it's been suggested that climate change both helped begin this techno tradition and also potentially led to its demise. Some people though, interestingly, have said that some of the tools found appear to be slightly more um, rudimentary in comparison to what was previously produced in the area, which shows a potential dying out of cultures and a relearning of how to do things in the area, which is interesting, but still shows that humans were thus progressing in their innovation if they had not had anyone to teach them previously how to make more sophisticated tools, then they themselves were re-innovating the stone, as it were. And that really brings us to the end of these two periods. From about 40 to 50,000 years ago, archeologists then see a plethora of stone tool use in Africa in the archeological record, which um, kind of shows the massive expansion that most likely happened, probably due to a period of climate change which allowed people to mingle, migrate, expand, have more resources and therefore feel the need to produce more tool types. However, we cannot say that the ability for people to create only occurred 100,000 years ago. Because of the sparseness of the archaeological record, pre 50,000 years ago. To exactly date when the first art was created or when people were first able to think of producing symbolic imagery is very difficult. It's actually, I reckon, most likely that people had the psychological foundations for creativity around 200,000 years ago and this was very, very slowly developed over a 100,000 year period until the right climatic changes were available and people began to actually create culture and pass on traditions. Now this expansion in tool progression is further evidenced by climate change because there was several periods called marine isotope stages where scientists believed that people were forced to find new ways of hunting, new ways of living, generally new ways of survival due to a period of cooling that occurred between 71 to 59,000 years ago. And as in the last 2.6 million years, there have been 45 interglacial and glacial periods of climate change, you can see how this most likely has had a great effect on the progression of the Homo sapien species as our cognitive abilities became more enhanced. And to give you a last final boring bit of climate information, there have been lake deposits studied from Ethiopia that suggest that between 200,000 to 125,000 years ago, there was a warm, wet environment happening in Africa, which most likely made it quite easy for humans to live and therefore did not force them to feel the need to create all too much because food was probably quite plentiful for them. However, between 125 to 60,000 years ago, we see a period of some cooling and severe drying in Africa, forcing people to find new methods of hunting, new food sources, and therefore forcing humans to do what humans do best, and that is adapt. Now, as we will see in later chapters, because humans had already faced very, very harsh conditions in Africa, this may have made them better equipped for when people began to move into Europe to face what would then become much colder, harsh conditions. Something which may have led to the demise of the Neanderthals. So that was a very whistle-top chaotic show of both the Steel Bay industry and Howison's port. Next time, we're going to be looking at creativity within Neanderthals. It's an exciting one, I assure you.